Hey friend and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, welcome. My name is Wendy and I'm with Inspire Ministries and I'm so glad that you have landed on today's video. Today I want to just talk with you about what scripture reading has meant to me, why it is that I study scripture and why I believe that every believer ought to be in their Bibles every single day. I just want to talk to you today and share some things with you, some thoughts with you concerning why we study scripture and what the great benefits of studying scripture is to the believer. So if this is a video that interests you, let's just hop right in. 2 Timothy 3, 16 through 17 says this in the Amplified Version. It says, All scripture is God-breathed, given by divine inspiration, and is profitable for instruction, for conviction of sin, for correction of error and restoration to obedience, for training in righteousness, learning to live in conformity to God's will, both publicly and privately, behaving honorably with personal integrity and moral courage so that the man of God may be complete and proficient, outfitted and thoroughly equipped for every good work. Wow, don't you love this? I love this. So right out of the gate, we're gonna do a little Bible study. I'm gonna break this down for you so that we can see it there in black and white and understand what's being said. Scripture has been given by God. It is God-breathed. And do you know that I think about that? Every time that I sit down to this Bible, I always think these are God's words. This is God-breathed. This is His voice. And Scripture has been given by God, and it is profitable for instruction, it is for the conviction of sin, it is for the correction of error, it is for the restoration to obedience, and it's for training for righteousness. And it's these things so that, as the scripture tells us, so that, one, the believer would be complete and proficient, Two, that we would be outfitted, right? Outfitted for battle, the battle that we are in as Christ followers. And three, so that we would be thoroughly equipped for every good work. As I see it, there are three goals. And dare I even say goals? Really, maybe that's not the proper word to use. Maybe what I mean are ambitions and values. But as I see it, we have these ambitions and values as believers in Christ that we want to adopt and inherit. And they are, one, to be inspired by the Word of God. Two, to be encouraged by what we read and hear. And then three, to be enabled to make the choice to obey what he's calling us to do. Inspired, encouraged, and enabled. Dale Partridge, who is one of my favorite Instagrammers, and you can look him up later, he is a Christian author who has this online teaching ministry of church planters in the world of Reformed theology, and he says this, most modern Christians have formed their theology by people that they've heard and not by scripture that they've read. And then he finishes that quote with this, open your Bible. I love this. Hebrews 4.2 in the King James Version says this, For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them, but the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them who heard it. Now the them that's mentioned three times here, the them that he's speaking to is the Israelites in the Old Testament who had the word with them and yet scripture tells us that it did not profit them. Now I don't know about you, but I don't want to read scripture that is not going to profit me. The whole point and the whole purpose of reading is that I will be transformed, that I will be renewed as a person, right? That I will be profited by by what I am reading, by what I am studying, and by the words that I am hearing in the print because it's God's voice. The Bible. We must believe it is something that we need. The gospel includes things like purification, trial, discipline, and service. Dare I say that it doesn't always look like we think the gospel should look. Not when Jesus says that I must go away or when Paul is allowed to be shackled in a prison cell. 
trust is what is needed. Trust is needed in the reality of love behind the appearance of indifference. We must, as Christians, believe that God is near when we come to communing with his word daily. When the worldly spectators consider it nothing but trouble, pain, loss, and confusion, we must trust God. We must believe that everything that we are reading is given to us, God breathed to us for the means of profiting us. I would say this to so many that I speak to on a regular basis. There are three key components to a healthy spiritual life, in my opinion. Three things that if not attended to properly will cause burnout, backsliding, and sometimes premature spiritual death altogether. These three things, I believe, are so vital that you really can experience deep communion with God apart from all three of these together. The first one is that you and I, when we come to the Word of God, we must be constant in our walk with the Lord. Constant means this by definition. It means not changing or varying, continuing without pause, regularly current, continual, persistent, faithful, unswerving in love and devotion, something that does not change or vary, perpetual, ceaseless, and loyal. We must be constant every day when we pursue Jesus Christ. The next thing that we must be in this spiritual process is we have to be consistent. To be consistent means this— Constantly adhering to the same principles, holding firmly together, steady, even, regular, dependable, persistent, unchanging, and unfailing. Now, this is where I think that many of us trip up because we lack in our daily devotion. I know this from personal experience because it was me for a very long time. I had good intentions to come to the Word of God, but I failed in my consistency of doing it regularly. And I believe that it is only when we come constantly and consistently to the Word of God that we hear His voice. Because the more we expose ourselves to His truth, to His God-breathed Word, then we recognize His voice, we love His voice, and we have more passion to get into His Word every single day. And then the final necessary way of life for the believer in Jesus, as I see it, is to be continual. Continual means this, of regular or frequent recurrence, often repeated, happening without interruption or cessation, repetitive, unbroken, and permanent. You and I have to be repetitive in our coming to Him every single day. We have to be regular. We have to have no interruption in our seeking after the Lord. So I believe three things that we have to be is constant, consistent, and continual. You can see some patterns between all three of these words, and yet they are all varying in some degree. The truth is that we cannot serve God with our whole heart, our whole mind, soul, body, and strength if all three of these components are not a part of our spiritual process. I just believe that, and again, I'm speaking from private personal experience. We must continue forward without pause. Why? Because there is danger in delay, that's why. By stopping too long to be contemplative just might cause us to have reason to believe that following Jesus is too hard and it's too heavy of a burden altogether, and we have all manner in that respect of walking completely away. We must be persistent in our pursuit of Jesus Christ. It's the only way that you and I are going to safeguard against becoming lukewarm or living an idle life. We have to be loyal. Joshua said it to his men. It's the same message that he gives to you and I as modern-day Christ followers. He says this in Joshua 24, 15, Choose today whom you will follow. And I say the same to you. We must make a choice who we are following. Sometimes we say we are Christ followers, but we're really not following anybody because we are lacking in our daily pursuit of him. We must hold firmly to what we know and why we know it. 
Every Christian ought to be able to answer why they believe the way that they believe. Every Christian ought to be able to answer this, but sadly, I believe that even the Christ follower, the one who goes to church every single week, is not often equipped to understand and know and then be able to communicate that effectively for why they believe what they believe. We must remain steady under pressure, dependable, and unfailing in our daily chasing after the King. We must be frequent in our seeking after the Father. It can't be just a middle of the week, man, I'm going to do my Bible study on Wednesday afternoon and then go to church on Sunday. Listen, it's going to take much more than that. We have to be constantly pursuing the heart of the Father. It's got to be constant, continual, it has to be ongoing, and it has to be without ceasing. We must repeat the pattern of pursuit every day of our lives, lest we grow cold and essentially numb to all he's doing. Listen, I remember a time when I would come to Bible studies on Thursday and I would enter into that space where all of these women who wanted desperately to look more like Jesus and learn more about his word, I would say to them, tell me something good. And so oftentimes they couldn't even tell me anything good. Why? Why did that happen? I believe because they became so numb to what he was doing. I believe that they grew cold over time because they weren't seeking after him daily. They had not made it a part of their daily pursuit. And so they grew cold. And what did I just say? Delay is dangerous. We have to keep going. We have to press in even when it's hard, even when it doesn't make sense, even when I'm reading things that might not make sense in the moment, I have to keep after this daily pursuit. Now listen, the same would be for my marriage. If I didn't pursue my husband, if I didn't ask him how his day was, if I didn't intentionally seek after having a conversation with him, what relationship would that be? The same then goes for you and I in our relationship with Jesus. We must pursue his heart. We must not be interrupted and we must be unbroken in our devotion and our honor. It's the only way, friend. Listen, I believe to live in the modern day time, in this sin-sick place, it's going to take more than a half-page devotional every other Wednesday afternoon and an hour church service on Sunday morning to prepare you and I for the battle that we're getting ready to go into. We must be constant, we must be continual, and we must be consistent. Until you're called home or until he comes to get us, dear ones, it really, really matters. And listen, I know that some of you need encouragement. Some of you need encouragement. Some of you need prodding. Some of you maybe feel like you need hand holding in this place and time. And for you, I would say this, get yourself a mentor. Get yourself someone. Get yourself in relationship with someone who is further along in their faith. Someone who encourages you. Someone who can inspire you. Someone who can challenge you to go deeper in your faith. But I know that for so many of us, even those who have been Christ followers for a very long time, we have trouble encouraging ourselves. And I want to tell you that we have to learn, like King David in the Psalms learned, to revive ourselves, to stir our own faith up, to lift our own spirits out of the muck and the mire. And we do this by keeping our gaze on Him. Practically speaking, we are to stay in the Word. We are to commune daily with the Father. That means having ongoing conversations with Him all throughout our day. We must ground ourselves in His promises. We must remind ourselves of His faithfulness. We must be grateful. Listen, it's really great that right now in the Thanksgiving spirit, right, in the month of November, that we see so many on social media saying what they're grateful for. But then what we tend to see are those same individuals who refer from being grateful the rest of the year. Listen, it's not a one and done thing. It is an ongoing attitude of a Christ follower to be grateful, to be thankful, to have that mindset all year long, and then to keep close company with others who are traveling the same path as you. I just mentioned King David revived himself. He was good at lifting his own spirits. And I want to show you, I want to show you his dependence on God. Take a look at Psalm 57. David's countenance, his very countenance changed within just one single verse. 
And I want to show you what I mean. Psalm 57, 4, he says this, My soul is among lions. I lie among the sons of men who are set on fire, whose teeth are spears and arrows and their tongues are sharp swords. He had enemies. He had real enemies that were out to get him. And no doubt he was feeling overwhelming fear in this moment. A good look at his choice of words here in just this one verse tells us that story. But then, with confidence, he is able to pen the words just following, and it's in two different verses. In verse 5 and 7, he says this, Be exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let your glory be above all the earth. My heart is steadfast, O God. My heart is steadfast. I will sing and give praise. You see, I believe that David had a determination. He had a determination to say, you know what, I may feel this way, but I am not led, I am not operated, I am not, I am not manipulated and influenced by my feelings. I know better than that. I know the God who I trust in. I know the God who has my back. I know the God who has already written the story of my life, and I trust him. He had a determination, and not only that, he had a fixed heart heart and a resolved spirit. We see determination, a fixed heart, and a resolved spirit. David is able to encourage himself in the Lord. And I would say to you today, friend, if he's able to, we're able to also. Though the battle is raging, though the journey is weary, though the enemy appears to be gaining ground, I will exalt the Lord. I will give him glory. I will sing and I will praise. And listen, the only way that we have the strength to be able to do this is when we are pursuing God every single day, when we are seeking after the heart of Jesus, when we are reading the word of God, when we are listening for his voice, when we are studying scripture, when we are asking God, how can this make me better? How can I profit? Not like the Israelites who had the word of God among them and did not profit by what they heard. How can I live differently? And how can I then profit by the word of the Lord? 1 John 2, 14 says this in part, because God's word lives in your heart, you've won your battle with the evil one. And this is the final thing that I want to talk to you about. Listen, it's not complicated. Getting into the Word of God, following after Jesus, it's not complicated. It might not be easy. It might not be convenient at times. It might require hard work or sacrifice. It might be foreign to the world's solutions, right? It might not be popular. It might be difficult to interpret at times, but it is not complicated. Getting into his word, reading the scriptures, even if it's two or three verses every single day, praying over those, dwelling on them, writing them out, paraphrasing what it is that you've read, dwelling on them all throughout the day, keeping them in front of us. Listen, it's not complicated. It might be difficult at first, but it's not complicated. We overcome evil by the word of God. And listen, there is so much evil in our world today. So many things that are vying for our attention. So many things that are aimed at throwing us off course. Today is a new day. And today we have to determine who it is that we are going to serve. We are overcome and we overcome evil by the word of God. It's the only way that we can practically and with strength live in the world today. We overcome heartache by the word of God. We overcome unforgiveness by the word. We overcome frustration by the word. We overcome disappointment and discouragement by the word of God. We overcome worldly desires and lusts by the word of God. All evil, all manner of corruption and wickedness by the word of God. And listen, friends, it is so important for us to stay in the word. It is never, I believe, in, in, our, in our history of our nation, in the history of the world, it has never been more important to get into the word of God every single day. And listen, again, if you don't know it, and if you are frustrated by it, and you are overcome by the totality of it, and you just don't even know where to, where to even start, 
reach out to somebody. Reach out to me. Reach out to a friend. Reach out to someone who is further along in their faith and help have them help you to get started. Have them to help you get going on your walk with the Lord. Listen, you cannot know his promises apart from being in the word. You cannot claim those promises over your life without knowing the truth, getting into the word, knowing the truth, knowing Jesus for yourself, knowing what it is that he said, knowing how it is that he lived, knowing what truths that we need to claim and talk about and study out in the word of God. It is so important. So friend, I hope that you have been encouraged by some of these thoughts today. I hope that you will incorporate some of these things in your own life and ask yourself the hard questions. Am I consistent in my faith? Am I staying constant? Am I continual in my pursuit or do I have some work to do? And if you have work to do, I would hope that you would seek the Lord in prayer, that you would ask him, God, I don't even know that I have a passion to do these things right now. So would you give me a passion? Would you give me a want to? Would you give me the strength that comes only from you to do this hard work, this uncomplicated work, but sometimes hard and sometimes challenging and sometimes frustrating work. God, would you help me? In the meantime, friends, I'm praying for you. If you have liked this video, give it a huge thumbs up. I would love to continue doing similar content just like this. So would you drop a comment down below? Let me know what kinds of videos that you would like to see. If you are not already subscribed, please subscribe to this channel and become a part of this family. It would mean so much to me. Don't forget to hit that notification bell to be notified for every time that I upload content content just like this one. And between now and my next video, friend, I pray that you have an awesome day with Jesus. Bye, friend.